Welcome to this week's W2L 11 Weather Impact. I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby, and this week we are breaking down at least something that comes to an end around November and December. And at this time around, we are recapping at least the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. So we have seen quite the historic hurricane season so far, and we're going to recap everything we saw within the past several months throughout the summer months and even a late fall month. So as you started off for you, that Atlantic season, we saw quite the bit of named storms out there, but we didn't complete the full list. We saw several category four, four and even five hurricanes and uh, several amounts of three and two uh, hurricane status. So we definitely did saw a busy and active season, but how busy are we talking? Well, we did see the forecast of 17 to 24 named storms. We ended up seeing 18 named storms and hurricanes was right around eight to 13 we saw 11 hurricanes and even major hurricanes was between four and seven. We did end up seeing five major hurricanes this uh, past season. Now, as you look at one of those hurricanes, Hurricane Barrel, that underwent rapid intensification that started as a Category 3 hurricane right on uh, June 30th, but eventually made its way as a Category 5 hurricane just a day later around 1050 on July 1st. So this was one hurricane that did undergo rapid intensification. But what about another one? We also are breaking down Hurricane Milton that definitely went another stage of rapid intensification. So started as a category one hurricane, but eventually made its way actually into a category five hurricane within about nine hours. So this also underwent rapid intensification due to those warm Gulf waters we did see this past year. Now we break down some of those major hurricanes that did reach U.S. landfall. We have a Hurricane Francine as well with those max sustained winds right at 76 miles per hour. We saw peak wind gusts right at 105 miles per hour. That did make landfall in St. Mary's Parish in Louisiana as a category two hurricane. Some areas brought up to eight to 10 inches of rainfall with this hurricane that did make landfall into Louisiana. One of the more major and historic ones we did see was Hurricane Helene, where which is a category four hurricane at landfall. It had max sustained winds out of 140 miles per hour, and those peak wind gusts were 160 miles per hour. That made landfall in Perry, Florida. And not only did you see impacts in Florida, but also into the Carolinas as well, where they saw historic once in a lifetime flooding with over 200 deaths, sadly, with this historic hurricane that we did see this past year. We have one more, at least for you, and we did break this down. <clears throat> we talk about those warmer waters and stronger storms we do typically see. So when it comes to this, that rapid intensification with climate change happening, well, we've seen about a 16 uh, increase a mile per hour with Helene, Barrel and Milton. So with that rapid intensification, did see instead of a category three hurricane, well, Helene was a category four hurricane. Same case with Barrel and Milton. It would have been a category four hurricane, but ended up being a category five hurricane due to climate change. So this has been one of the main factors that has led to rapid intensification with a lot of these hurricanes we have seen this past year. As you look at those tropical cyclones even more though, pretty much breaking down what rapid intensification was, and you did hear it a lot with a lot of these hurricanes that were named. Well, that means when the wind speeds increase with at least 35 miles per hour within 24 hours, that it basically is the sum up of rapid intensification. So when we break it down even more, about 79% of major tropical cyclones undergo rapid intensification, and that is projected to increase as we go throughout the next several years if nothing is done due to climate change. To break it down even more with hurricanes and climate change, and what we know, well, those warmer waters <clears throat> are fueling more of those hurricanes happening, which leads to a heavier rain and even higher storm surge with a lot of these hurricanes and tropical cyclones do, that we do see. So this is one of the main factors that if we see those warmer waters, that that means more impacts and more damaging uh, to structures along those coastal areas we all love to go and vacation to. So that's something we definitely have to pay attention to over the next several years. And as you look at that monthly average and pretty much the frequency of tropical cyclones in the Atlantic Ocean, well, we typically we see less than one around May, June. We start to really get into that more increased peak throughout July. And those peak months are August, September, and October, where even in September we can see up to six 
<clears throat> named storms that is throughout the month. And of course, back into November and December, which we are in the month of December now, we see less than one named hurricane. So pretty much that's when we can call it a quits of this hurricane season and likely recap what we've so far seen this year. Now let's break it down for you. That 2024 tropical cyclone, well, we started off a little busy, especially into the June <clears throat> and July months where we saw Hurricane Barrow, which was a, a dangerous hurricane that did make landfall into the U.S. And then we trailed off a little bit into the middle of July and early August, but eventually we saw Debbie and Ernesto. And Ernesto was in fact a category two hurricane and likely we saw a trend of some pretty busy times ahead as we've gone into September, where we saw about like six to seven named storms moving from France in. Now, a lot of these didn't necessarily make them landfall within the U.S., but it was surely busy when it came to the tropics where we saw Francine, which was Category 2 hurricane. Of course, the historic one, Helene. We also saw Gordon, which was a tropical storm. Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, and Milton was all within a month time span. So this is where we saw a busy time and it didn't end there. We also saw some busy times into October and even November where we saw Nadine, Oscar, Patty, Raphael, which was stayed out to see was a category three and four, but even Sarah. So we saw some surges really into those hurricane seasons when we saw those warmer temperatures throughout the South and uh, throughout the Atlantic, where we saw that surge of tropical cyclones pretty much once a week. So this is something that we've been breaking down and can tell you this was really one of those historic years that we have seen as far as hurricanes go. And we'll continue to track this out as we go towards the next year and when we start up our hurricane season again near June and even May sometimes. So we'll likely keep an eye on that as we go towards the 2025 tropical season ahead. Thanks for watching this week's W211 Weather Impact. I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby.